Hello guys, welcome back to Yulan App. For today's video, we are going to show you how to use TensorArt AI for beginners. So if you're interested, let's start a tutorial. So we all know that we've seen some videos or if you're not aware yet, there's going to be or there is a current, a current trend right now wherein you basically showcase AI generated images online. So may it be on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, or even on X or previously known as Twitter. So we all know a lot of people are using AI right now to basically create their own images from AI. Well, in this case, we'll be showing you one of those platforms, which is going to be Tensor.art. Now, Tensor, Tensor Art here is a platform wherein you could basically create or generate your own images from AI for free. So you don't have to basically pay for anything here, but with the free version that they have right now, there's going to be some limitations. So if you want to further advance or get the advanced features for, from Tensor a, uh, Art here, you need to buy the pro version. Now, in this case, first thing that we need to do here is we need to access their website. So go ahead and open up any browser, go to tensor.art, and from then, you should be able to see the main UI here. Now, from here, first thing we need to do is we need to basically create our account. So at the top right of your screen here, you should see the sign in button. So go ahead and click on that. And from here, you will be able to access or log in via the following options. Now, you could basically log in or create your account via your email address here. Go ahead and enter your email address here, hit and continue, and from then, just follow the steps you to create your account but you also have the option here to use your google account or your discord account for you to basically log in and create your account so maybe i want to use my google account here so let's just google here choose our email and once we've chosen our email we want to go ahead and just wait for it to reload and let us log in now once we are logged in we can now access their services now in this case what we need to do first is we want to start creating one so at the top right here you have the create for option here so we have the classic mode and the workflow mode here so for now we're going to use a classic mode here now in the classic mode here there are going to be some important aspects that you need to do here so the most important part portion here is going to be the prompt now prompt depending on what you enter here or how you describe your image to be uh, you'll be able to basically get a uh, image out of that now depending on how you actually describe this one so the better the prompt or the better how you actually describe your image here the better the images and uh, the uh, closer it is on what you are currently thinking now in this case i want to say i want to say this is going to be a, a cat in a santa claus costume now once we've entered that we could go ahead and add our other aspects here. Like for example, we have the negative prompt here. No, neg so negative prompt here is a prompt where in this case, if you add anything here, like for example, uh, remove any reindeers or whatever here, you could go ahead and add whatever here. Like for example, you don't want snow on your picture. You could so go ahead and remove snow or enter snow here and yeah. Now we also have the other settings here. We have the aspect ratio, which is the size of our image. So maybe I want to say this is going to be a portrait one. We have the sampling method here is Euler A. But this one, the other section here is going to be kind of advanced. So the thing here is if you don't know what you're editing here, you go ahead over on the question mark here. So like for example, sampling method here is different. Sampling methods can yield different results, even with the same prompt and they interact differently with other advanced settings. Now in this case, uh, the the general uh, rule here is depending on what sampler you use here like for example i want to say lms here i want to use this one and if you want to increase your sampling steps here and a cfg scale here you can go ahead and do that so depending on what you actually enter here you'll be able to uh, basically uh, get a different result anytime now we also have the advanced settings here if you want to use those as well so we have the hardest fix here and add the tailor here now again the more details the higher quality and the optimal solution to facial collapses. It also improves hand de deformities to some extent. Now at the top section here, we also have the models. So the model here is the basic is going to be stable diffusion here. So maybe you want to say we want to add a new Laura here. You could choose the other Laura here. Now depending on what you actually add here, it's going to determine what your image is going to look like. So maybe I want to say that I want to use this one. Go ahead and select this one. If you want to add another Laura, you could go ahead and do that. So maybe I want to say Christmas critters here because we are uh, targeting for a cat here. And go ahead and do that. 
And in here we have the add control net if you want. So add control net to create more accurate results from a reference image. Now in this case, you could go ahead and select a image here that he, that is uh, quite uh, closer to what you're looking for. Like for example, uh, based from a scribble here or the depth or the uncanny here, you go ahead and use that. But for now, I'm go I don't want to use any of those, and I'm contented with what I added here. So in this case, I want to go ahead and click on generate here. It's going to start generating our image here. So at the right side here, this is where you'll be able to see it. Now, as you can see, this is the progression of our image here. So it might take some time depending on how their servers are uh, currently loaded. So if a lot of people are using their servers here, it might say, take some time. So in this case, you will just want to wait for it to complete the loading process here. And as you can see, this is our generated image. So if you click on it, you should be able to see your currently generated image. So there's going to be a few things that you do here. Like for example, you could rotate your image, make it a lot bigger. Or if you want to zoom out or zoom in, or if you want to download it, just click on the download button here. And it's going to start the download process. Now, another thing that you could do here on Tensor Art is if they have already existing image here. Like for example, we have this image here. So let's go ahead and click on the run option. Now in the run option, you should be able to see what prompts they'll be using here. Like for example, so if you click on the run here, instead of seeing uh, the uh, prompts that they use, it's going to be uh, changing the model itself. But when we switch over to the other section here, maybe you want to go to post here, you should be able to see the post other people are actually creating right now. Now maybe I want to say I want to use this image here. So just click on the remix here and it's going to give you the option to view those specific prompts that they use to generate that image. Now, for example, if you want to uh, basically generate your own, just click on generate here. It's going to use that same prompt here to get the same result on what we saw before. Now, for example, if you want to add some Laura or even change a few things on the prompts that they use here, you could go ahead and do that. Now, also, you could go ahead and change the settings. Now, depending on how you actually set your settings here, you'll be able to get a different photo with the kind of the same or kind of the same vibe that you saw before or the image that we actually use. But yeah, so that's how you use Tensor Art here. And that's about it. So hopefully this video was able to help you. Like and subscribe to Yelan app. Thank you for watching.